the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's going to be a beautiful day that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Like that thing, didn't you? Woo! Hello. Ta ta. It's often said the more time you put into a project, the better it'll be, but only if that time is productive time. By this token, it also stands to reason the more productive water you can fish in a day, the better the odds will be in your favor. The more chances the fish will have seen your offering, and the odds are much better that you'll catch more fish. Naturally, all this depends greatly on the location you choose, the dip you fish, as well as the lure, color, and presentation you use. Now that sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? Well, to be totally honest, it is. But it is enjoyable work. It's a whole lot more fun than digging a ditch four feet deep and 100 yards long on a 105 degree day or moving 50 pound bags of shell corn all day. Here, you'll need to be experimenting with different depths, presentations, and terrains, as well as lures and colors to see and find out what works best. Now to me, all that's enjoyable and I learn a whole lot about this fantastic sport. Let's see if he's got a buddy out there. Okay. Today we've already completed our homework. We're catching bass in a depth of four to eight feet, close to deeper water. And the best presentation that we found is a stop and go retrieve. The most productive lure is one I've come to have a ton of confidence in. The Bass Pro Shop Crack Crawl that we're using is 4.5 inches long. And the color that's most appealing at this time is the Okeechobee Magic Pattern. Today we're fishing in a place where most fishermen can really relate to, a small lake. Hello there, big boy. Easy does it. Come here. Come here. Aren't you a pretty thing? Woo! Jig hook is sharp. You liked it too, didn't you? Let me get a good hold on you. Aren't you a pretty thing? Woo! You know, bass who live in these waters are really no different than those who live in our big impoundments. They possess the same basic characteristics and they react the same. They move shallow and they move deep and vice versa. Many small bodies of water can be fished from shore. However, as a general rule, a small lake that has good structure usually doesn't produce nearly as many bass for fishermen casting from the bank, except during the spring when bass are relating to the shallows or when you can cast to the structure from shore. The same as in a big lake. If there's a good amount of both shallow and deep structure, a boat is almost a must. On the other hand, if the lake is a small one and doesn't have much open water structure, or if the lake stays off colored, 
shoreline fishing should be much better. Now right on that break, right on that four to eight foot drop. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Today's conditions log is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Doing here, buddy boy. What are we doing, old boy? You run out of the boat, didn't you? Come on back here. You got it down there, didn't you? That just to say off on me. What are you gonna do? And you got the whole thing. Look at that. There we go. Got you. That little fat baby. <laughs> Love you. Okay. Because you probably won't find a depth information map on a small lake, it's a good idea to talk to the landowner. And it's smart to remember to always be courteous and get permission to fish these waters. Otherwise, you could get arrested or maybe even shot at. <laughs> I doubt that though. When you handle it right, the landowner just might be able to tell you what the underwater contour is like. Your first test when fishing a small lake is to learn the configuration of it and to learn the structure. Ease around in your boat watching your graph and study the shoreline structure that extends out and to it. Try to adapt the information the owner gave you. If you see a ditch, channel, depression, or a point entering the lake, take the time to trace it out. You know, a small body of water is fished just like any other bass waters. You've got to strive to determine pattern depth and then establish a pattern. And two good places to find the correct depth or on sloping points that slope into deeper water and along channel edges, just as you would do on a larger impoundment. They're really no different. The point to keep in mind is that smaller waters are the same as bigger waters, with the exception is that there's less area to fish and that a bass doesn't change its lifestyle just because it's in a smaller place. Their lifestyle is tailored to the type of water and the amount of cover. Good fish. Where are you going? That's a strong Jesse right there. Whoa! Well, you're talking about a strong fish. You got that old thing down in your mouth, didn't you? There, I got it. Wow! You know about a strong fish. Whoa, man, good fight there. Yep. Okay, goodbye. Oh, 
Oh, he's like snatched that right out of my hand. <laughs> Woo! I like that. Mm. Brother Ben shot our goose and killed our hen. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Stren, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lure Lock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by LureLock. Their TacLogic technology locks your terminal tackles safely into place. 100% made in America. LureLock, revolutionizing the way you fish. Okay, tell you what, let's look at a typical small lake with a considerable amount of structure. Now the water you fish may have more or less, but let's use this illustration as an example to discuss how we would fish this particular body of water from early summer to mid-fall, okay? Normally during this period of the year, bass leave the shallow shorelines and zero in on key irregular features out from shore. Note that in this lake, it has a dam at one end. Here the water is usually deeper. Position one are corners of the dam, which are prime locations. The better corner is the one that has more cover. Structure of some sort and is closer to the deeper water. Position two marks the spot where the main creek channel is dammed off, and it could be excellent. Good fishing might be experienced along the channel edge, or you may have to work back up the channel until you find a pattern depth. A point extending out into the pond at position three. This is not just a point, it's a creek channel point, the finest of all points. Here fish can usually find a comfortable depth and they have all the important ingredients. Deeper water close by. Now at position four, we have a secondary point. Structure like this can be highly productive. This highly productive form of real estate is always a good place for scattered bass, but it's always the type of place where you can catch 10 bass on 10 casts. Fish using this spot like to have the convenience of both shallow water for feeding and deeper water to drop off into if they somehow feel threatened. A channel junction at position five is really worth fishing. Depth will be the critical factor here, and the better junction will be the one with the proper depth. That little fat fish. Yep. Okay, ta-ta. A rounded secondary point. Now this is not the type of point with a sharp drop off nearby. It primarily slopes, but it can be a choice feeding area, and if you work it at the proper depth enough times, you should find fish there. Okay, a creek enters the lake at position seven. Being the largest tributary, experience tells us that it will probably hold more fish, and this would indicate that it should be explored first. Position eight is a secondary bank that extends way out from the shoreline. Areas of this type are super, and if deeper water is close by, well, it's gonna be all the better. Leaving the secondary bank, the channel moves out into the plate to position nine, where on the way, it forms a U-bend. Note that this is the only sharp bend in the creek, so it can be an excellent spot if the depth is correct. At position 10, we see a deeper shoreline. Areas of this type can be dynamite, especially early and late or on cloudy days. And finally, number 11, a ridge. 
These little tiny high spots can be dynamite, especially if deeper water is close by and cover is present. A little potted thing. Keep in mind that bass may not always be on a particular type of structure, but they may use it from time to time. And it's always a good idea to keep going back to likely looking areas, even if you only make a few casts on it. Always go back to it and try it. You never know. Bill's question and answer of the week is brought to you by LureLock. Our durable tackle boxes will protect your prize lures and make organization fun and easy. LureLock, revolutionizing the way you fish. Bill, like you, I use quantum smoke rods with micro guides. What's a good knot when using braid and full carbon lines? Micro guides need small knots. With strand braid, you can use from 30 pound test that has an eight pound mono diameter. Now my favorite knot when tying these two lines is Strin's Uni to Uni. You can learn how to tie this knot on Strin's website. A great knot that's very small and cast exceptionally well. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. Anglers looking for a way to make their smaller boats stay put in shallow water? Check out the PowerPole Heavy Duty Spike. The spike helps hold small boats exactly where you want to keep them. It also secures the bow of a bass boat that has power poles. Each spike comes with a nylon dock line and push grips to help you easily sink it into sand or mud. Need to stay steady in one spot? Spike that spot. You can fish there as long as you wish. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Wow. Eighth full of it. I'm going to tell you what, I bet you already I set the hook just like that. Look at that. That fish has got that jig all the way down in his... Oh, they just about, just about got it all. Let me show you why I think this bait is such a good bait. Look at that. I got one tail left. Look at it. <laughs> Isn't that pathetic? Let me show you what a good one looks like. See? A little comparison. See what a good one looks like? As you move this bait along, these flappers are flapping like that, creating a lot of vibration in the water. These little legs right here are moving like that. They're creating eye appeal. These curly tails in the back, they're moving constantly as you move along. You've got two colors right here. You've got a kind of blue fleck right here, and you've got kind of a green pumpkin with a gold fleck right here. This is an Okeechobee magic color that I'm using. What crazy fish would not take a shot at that? Now let me tell you, it's important to remember that anytime you're fishing a key structural feature and have no success, change baits and pay special attention to your presentation. If you're fishing a crankbait, for instance, and it's not producing, don't give up on the spot until you've tried another lure, like maybe a worm. Maybe a slow presentation is a ticket. Experimenting can do wonders at times. Oh, yep. Yeah. Whoop. Oh, 
big old fish. Big old strong. Let's strip that drag. Oh, what a good. All right, come here. Oh, big one. Pretty fish. Wow. Look at that. Woo! Nice. They've eaten the toenails, the ears, the nose, everything off of that one. Look at that. Only thing that's left is doing. <laughs> In closing, let me say once again, like I said earlier, many waters and these small lakes possess almost exactly the same characteristics as larger lakes and impoundments. But because they're small, the bass are usually easier to locate. And you can be sure they're great training grounds for learning more about the habits and habitats of bass. Hey, a great many anglers enjoyed their first taste of bass fishing on petite waters. And they still produce some of the finest bass fishing in the country. Tell you what you do. Try one and see if you don't agree. Until next time, how about catching one for me? Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.